girl jail beauty 87 here and today we are going to get into part two of the worst makeup of 2020 so if you all saw the first video earlier today it was me talking about eyeshadow palettes in particular now i do have a few more eyeshadow palettes just because you know i filmed that video i think like at the end of october beginning of november y'all know eyeshadow palettes get released every single day of the week it seems like so i have some more to add in here but i'm gonna start off with the um just makeup things in general that i have um as far as like you know foundation concealer powder lipstick stuff like that and then i will end on the palettes of course so i just tried this recently and it was terrible so i have the revlon color stay light coverage foundation um in the shade five i think it's five is it 500 cappuccino i know it's cappuccino but sorry 510 cappuccino so yeah this foundation is terrible like it but i think the only reason it's terrible honestly is because it has sunscreen in it so it makes you look gray if you're my skin tone because it has spf 34 and that just made me look gray and i wasn't here for the gray you know like i'm almost dead look so um that's why this is a failed speed it's not necessarily like the formula of the product itself it's just the fact that you know like since it has sunscreen in it i'm gonna be out here looking great and i don't want to look gray so that's the only reason it's in here otherwise i mean the formula of it was okay i do like the clean milk better from um who you call those people um cover girl and i don't usually like cover girl and when i do like cover girl is usually foundations so the next thing i have and i have a love hate relationship with this thing because it's like sometimes i feel like it looks okay but the majority of the time when i tried it with different foundations the first foundation i tried it with it was fine but after that it was just like it looked i feel like it looked terrible every time i use it and this is the maybelline what is it lasting fix banana translucent setting powder all day matte finish in banana um i like this product when i first tried it. like my first um go around of using it i liked it but i tried it with several foundations after that and i felt like it looked bad with like all the ones i used it with so i'm like if you're only good for one foundation and i have like multiple foundations in my collection it's like you ain't the one for me and the crazy thing is like um i was really hoping it would work well with other stuff because it worked well with a high-end foundation but then i used it with like three other high-end foundations and it was like yeah no it was not a vibe because the color of it is nice. I mean, the price of it is a decent, I guess, for a drugstore one. It's 0.21 ounces or six or six grams for the product. I like it, but um, I think it needs to work well with more than just one foundation, which is why it is um, the worst for me. Because, I mean, you working with one foundation is cute, but, you know, when somebody got like 45 foundations or like 50 foundations in their collection because they make reviews, like, you working with one of the like 50 foundations is not about to cut it at all. Um, next, I have this sponge. So, this is the Elf Camel um, Concealer Sponge. They made this specifically to use with concealer, and it has like the double ended situation. So, I had been using this for a little while. When I first tried it, I liked it like underneath the eyes, but I feel like it soaks up way too much water. No matter how much you wring it out, it still retains a lot of water, which means it's picking up the concealer underneath your eye when you're trying to blend it out. And then when I tried to use it with powder, then I felt like it just left weird marks on my face when i tried to press in the powder and then it wouldn't press the powder into the skin nicely so it's like i don't know what the fabric is on this sponge that's making it do that not to mention it picks up all this weird color like i don't even know where this red came from and it's on like both sides of it but um yeah i would say don't get this sponge this is a terrible makeup sponge and their normal makeup sponge is fine like the little pink one that they have i want to try that marshmallow blender one but like ever having tried this one i, I held back on it because i was like this is not what it is at all but you know um they have other sponges that you can try so just try those don't don't try that sponge because it is not a vibe at all now this is a brand i love and i usually buy a lot of their releases but um this release was not it for me this is the dominique cosmetics um lipstick collection the one that they came out with in the bullets and for me this isn't it just because i feel like the colors don't show up on anybody by skin tone like look at this like when i swatch it on my hand i think it literally like blends into my hand see like it barely showed up in the lipstick video if you all have seen it i'll try to remember to link it up here but like it, it barely showed up at all i was like what what's going on here what is this and then i so that was a shade new cocoa i should probably stay and then it's because she's a tease so of course y'all know i had to buy the marvin one as well and this one didn't really do anything for me either which i was kind of disappointed with now i do like the lip liner which is why i'm not showing it here but like these just fell short for me because i was like these are the darkest two you have to offer for people to look like me and um 
they they didn't like cut it or do it for me at all because like i said it wasn't the form that was bad it wasn't that um the colors are bad but i think they're nice colors but it's like they're not deep enough for anyone besides a medium tan person so like all your black followers just gotta wait for the next set of lipsticks to roll out or like what because i i this ain't it what this ain't it okay so now we're gonna get into the eyeshadow palettes because i only have a few though I, i'm so glad i didn't have a whole bunch of stuff that i didn't like to um try out because the majority of stuff i most likely got rid of so that's why this video is kind of short and plus i didn't want to mention like all of that stuff but it's like a whole lot of stuff so i guess we'll start with um um natasha denono so these two face palettes um i love the presentation and like the detail of this one right here but i feel like the form in this one isn't as good as the first one like i feel like the first one she came out with the bloom is like the best form that she has out of all of these um i don't like this um diamond powder because i feel like it's really sparkly and glittery i feel like this highlighter was quite hardly pressed in here and it was hard to get out and then um the super glow is cute or whatever but I don't know to me i use it more as a highlighter than like it's a blush situation and then the cream it's okay but i felt like um this is more of like a palette i have to use in winter time because in the summertime i felt like it wouldn't really show up on me unless i use this shade and this is really glittery or maybe i could just use the cream and put a powder on top of it in the summertime and in the winter time use the cream and this powder i don't know but um to me this one fell short as far as for people my skin tone i just didn't feel like it would work well for us so that's why it's in here because I'm like, the palette's supposed to work well for me, and it doesn't. So I just stick to the Bloom palette. I do have um one of the, this palette on my face today, though, believe it or not. My problem with this palette is the creams. The powders are fine, but the creams in here are terrible. Like, look how deep that pan is. I think I've used it, like, twice. And it's just the formula of these that makes it really weird. Like, they're this really hard-pressed, like, situation going on. See, like, and it's this weird putty-looking thing. And you can poke your fingers in it and do all that. And I just thought that was, like, really weird. And I think the same thing thing it goes for this one yeah like this one feels even harder than the last one but that's why i don't really reach for it that much i liked um this color right here but i once i tried the formula on it i was like oh no 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 natasha no so um these are the highlights i have on my face right now though these two at the bottom so i just mixed both of them together like i started off with this one and then put a dark one on top and that's what's on my chin and like on my um cheekbones and down the nose and all that so i like the highlighters in here it's just a bust for me when it comes to the cream. You can just buy individual highlighters from her. So you don't have to buy this palette just for that. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this going clear soon. Just because like this formula up here is so bad. But she does try to experiment with stuff. So I feel like it was just one of her experimental things that, you know, went bad. And yeah, I just stuck with it. So there we go. The last thing I have is palette. So I figure I'll start off with Urban a Decay. So this little stone vibes mini palette if you will i don't know i don't like the formula of these shimmers in here and then of course they always they are a brand i feel like that is known for always having like one of these shades in like every single palette it's like if people buy your palettes consistently like they buy the naked collection and all that we don't need you to put this in every single palette because they already have it in every single palette you have before so you can stop with adding this to every single palette you have that's one of the reasons i don't really buy from urban decay or you don't really see them on here too much and i said that in the video when i um did this um video but yeah so um i wanted to try this formula since everybody was raving about how wonderful it was but i personally don't like it and then like again with the colors that they chose i feel like it's hard for me to make a look because it's like i only have this and this color to choose from and that's it and then the shimmers i feel like don't show up that um pigmented on the lid or maybe you have to cut the crease to get them to be where you want them to be and wet the brush and all that extra stuff and i don't really go for doing all that especially since Again, I own like five million palettes, so this little thing was just not it for me, and I was disappointed by it, to say the least. Then I have the Naked Cherry palette. So when I tried the Naked Honey, and it actually turned out pretty well, I was like, well, maybe I'll try out the Naked Cherry because um I was like, it looks like it has a decent amount of deepened tones, and boy, was I wrong. Like, look at the actual color story of this. Like, I feel like the only shades I really use in here is this one, um, this one, and maybe this one because after it gets like about right here and ambition it's like i'm not using anything else in here to be perfectly honest i might use this juicy shade to dust over something and this bang bang shade is an inner corner highlight but it's like the rest of this palette to me is just not worth it plus the formula in here isn't the same as the formula in the naked honey palette it's not the good formula that they put in that palette so it's just like oh okay so this is like your old formula that i don't like so 
That's why it's bad to me, and um, I put it in here. So these Huda Beauty, like, mini palettes, a lot of her mini palettes I noticed I don't like. So that's why I stopped buying them. I didn't buy the Haze little thing they had after this pastel one let me down. Because look at this, like, the only shade I feel like I can use in here is this one. I might be able to get away with using this to dust over that one. The same with this one. I like to use these to dust over shades. But, like, these two serve no purpose to me. And then these aren't, like, you know, actual shimmers. They're more, like, topper situations. So it's, like... Um, I feel like it doesn't look as opaque on the lid and then you have to cut the crease and do a whole bunch of work just to make these, um, topper shadows work. And I'm not trying to do all that. Again, a person who has a lot of palettes, that's not ideal for me and I don't want to do it. So after that palette came out, I just stopped buying her many palettes because I felt like they weren't cutting it at all. Then I have the Neon Orange palette. Now, I this is the best one out of the Neon set she has. This one and the pink one. I do not like the green one at all. The formula on it was terrible. But what I don't like, again, is like all these shimmery things are topper shades. I don't want toppers. I want actual shimmers. Stop trying to give us all these topper shades and just give us shimmers. I mean, I can understand she has like one or two toppers in there to give extra um, oomph to the shimmer that's already in there and it complements it. But it's like there are no shimmers in here. So it's like I'm supposed to use this satin or this like topper as an inner corner highlight and that be it and do an all matte look. Because I'm like, I'm not trying to put a, you know, topper S type shade on top of my whole lid because then I'm going to have to build it up entirely too much and nobody got time for that. So, to me, these were a bust as well. I think I got them like 50% off and that's the only reason I got all three of them or i i think i originally had bought the green one and the pink one and then i just end up with the orange one i forgot how i ended up with this one i just showed you but i know i bought the green one and the pink one when she had to sell on her website or i might have just ordered all three point is i got all three of them and i wasn't impressed by hardly any of them not to mention i don't really feel like they're necessarily neon tones and this one kind of reminds me of that um what is that palette um the Poppy Cosmetics um, Neon Drips, it kind of gives me the vibes of that palette without, the, like, the greens. And I think they had, like, a purple in there. So, maybe we have a main chick, side chick situation. But the only thing is, I don't really like the formula on either one of those palettes. So, I don't think I should be main chick, side chick in it. Because, realistically, I wouldn't keep either one of them. So, I feel like you're not surprised about this palette at all. The Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 Palette from Morphe. So, I ended up with this because I think... I got it at like an extremely low price and I haven't spent any of my money. Because y'all know I be selling my makeup on Macari. So when people buy makeup, sometimes I just buy stuff back off Macari instead of spending my own money. I think that's what happened with this. So I was like, okay, I'll try it out. So I bought this and then the formula of it wasn't the same as the original palette, like she said. And then Jen Love Reviews did her video about how, you know, they had changed the formula and they, they were lying and saying this one was the same and it wasn't the same. And they changed it without telling anybody. So, um, with that being said, I was just kind of like, it's like I keep trying to give Jacqueline, Jacqueline chances and I keep them like it's just a whole bust and wrap. So, that's why I didn't like this palette because it's not the same as the original palette. And I felt like I was hoodwinked bad boobs who lied to and all those good things because... Well, you kind of were. She told us it was the original formula. It wasn't. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. Last one I have. I feel like you shouldn't be surprised about it either because I talked about how I felt like the colors in the palette didn't translate to your eyes the way they did in the pan. And that's why I don't like this palette. So, I feel like with that being said, there's only two palettes I think I said that about. And you saw in um, volume one or part one of this video that I already named one. So, this is the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream palette. I, um... Talked about how these colors didn't translate to the same color that they are in the pan. I don't think the colors at the top did. I think it was just mainly like the pastel ones that didn't do it. I think they were lighter than they were in the pan, which I don't understand. But, you know, whatever. I don't like this palette. I wanted to, but I just prefer the cake palette. I wanted to like this one, though, because it has all the pastels in it. But I find I need darker pastels. So, I think I'm going to just buy the Midas Cosmetics Artistry volume one palette the one that's made for darker skin tones I was, um i think i saw neon mua um try it or whatever but i'm gonna just go ahead and buy that one i want to get volume one and two because i like the color stories that they came out with but yeah this palette just wasn't it for me so those are all the things that i tried in um 2020 that i wasn't necessarily excited about um i hope you all enjoyed this video remember you all the diamonds i'll catch you guys in the next one mm -hmm.